All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Myself, Dr. Nichol, out of uh, Southern California. I'm here with the great Dr. Johnny Franco out of Austin, Texas. Everything's bigger in Texas. Exactly. I'm pleasure to be with SoCal Plastic Surgeon, with one of the greatest Instagrams that I follow. Uh, and not to actually be outdone by Austin Plastic Surgeon. I mean, check out his stuff, too. Appreciate it. So I think today we're talking about a little coast-to-coast -coast plastic surgery here. We, we are. We're, ta we're talking about from, from the Texan coast to the SoCal coast. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Actually, yep. shot from Manhattan. So this is a true transcontinental deal mm -hmm. right here. And which is fitting because we're talking about total body transformation. We are talking about total body transformation. So one of the things I think that is being asked of us more and more, Dr. Franco, your practice let's, is, is butt augmentation, body contouring. I kind of call it hourglass contouring. That's sort mm -hmm. of a, a fair way to do it. Uh, I also kind of have a similar practice. Yeah. So one of the things we get asked the most is, can you do breast procedures with butt procedures? Yeah, I, I, I do, but to a limited fashion. So okay. I'll do a breast augmentation sure. and a BBL at the same time. Okay. I won't do a full mastopexy, breast reduction, mm -hmm. and a BBL at the same time. Okay. Just because I feel like you compromise some of the results in one or the other. Totally. So g give it to me real quick, like everyone's a candidate for, for breast augmentation BBL, or is that you're pretty... I would say most people yep. can qualify for that because typically if you have more issues going on with the breast, then you're not going to be a straightforward breast augmentation Yeah, Yep, candidate. I agree. So, I agree. Uh, it, that's typically my line. Okay, I gotcha. So let's throw out another scenario out of here. What what makes you decide uh, to combo breast and butt? Is there, are there any benefits from it? Is it totally just patients brought in or is it most kind of, of give me positives of, and negatives? Yeah, most of the time it's patients, are, it's, they're going to take two weeks off for their BBL recovery typically. And so yeah. they're like, I want to do my breast dog. It's going to be hard to take more time off. Totally. And so uh, the rec they know the recovery is going to be a little bit more, but they're like, I got this time off. I've yep. worked out grandmother coming to take care of the kids. <laughs> I've worked out time off. <laughs> I've sent the family away. So they've got their plan. Those are window opportunities. Don't mess with grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't mess with grandma. Don't mess what, with grandma. What about you and your practice? What, what do you do? Yeah, so I, we don't always agree on everything. We, we, we don't agree on everything. Uh, my way's always right, I like to tell them. <laughs> um, so listen, I think, I think butt and breast uh, combo procedure is super powerful, especially when we talk about from an hourglass perspective. I think, what, what are we doing? I think in the long run, we're balancing hip, shoulder to chest, right? So mm -hmm. I think certainly in some of those cases, when we add in the breast augmentation portion, that gives you that total hourglass mm -hmm. contouring. So I think as far as... I mean, I really believe as far as procedures go, I think that's one of the most powerful body contouring, body makeover, hourglass makeover procedures. Um, but do you do breast lift and BBL at the same time? I, I do. Like dancing around my I do. I, I, I will do. A, I will do a, a breast lift. I, and I, but I want to. I want to change that. That is not a breast reduction, right? Okay. Like, like we're talking. Uh, a breast lift is basically what I define as like, you know, someone's had kids, they still have volume, they just got a little bit of sag after, uh, you know, breastfeeding. Cool, we'll do a lift at the same time. Someone comes in, big, big, massive breasts. That procedure in itself is gonna take a couple hours. That's not the type of person I'm gonna combine with a butt augmentation, and, and that just rolls back so, to safety. So you will, but again, very selective yep, in, yep. in who you will do yep, it. Yeah, yep. but I think uh, implants, uh, breast implants, and butt augmentation, great combination. I, I think it's a phenomenal combination. Now, on that, let, let me switch up a little bit. Uh, I know you and I have chatted about this a little bit more. Run me through tummy tuck butt augmentation. Uh, that's a great question because that's like our my, my uh, that's our uh, mommy makeover that's you know really been switched over a little bit because I yes. think a couple things we see it all the time where people have gotten a, a tummy tuck their belly looks great but for whatever reason the love handles weren't addressed the upper back weren't addressed the the midsection so so let me interrupt you here for a second because I, I just want I want to I want to challenge you on something I, I'd say that a tummy tuck does not address the waist and love handles for the most part, right? Like, uh, 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 correct. I mean, a lot of people get a tummy tuck and think that their waist is going to be tiny or a term I hear from my Instagram patients is uh, snatched. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it does in terms of cinch like an internal corset of the muscle plication, but it doesn't address the excess fatty tissue in our love handles that yes. unfortunately I and a lot of my patients have. Yeah, yeah. So how do you address waist? Okay, so if I came to you, Mm -hmm. Wanting a snatched waist, Dr. Franco. Yeah. What's my answer? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can't do that without doing lipo 360 if you don't get all the way around them. And then you got to decide what to do with the belly. If they need a tummy tuck, if you have loose skin below the, yeah. the panty line, that type of stuff, or yeah. belt line for our men, yeah. um, you know, then you need to to address that. Tightening the muscles if it's been stretched out due to, to weight or, or pregnancy. So uh, uh, I think that's why it's important to go to someone that knows and has all the option stuff. Because if somebody only does one procedure, that's what you're going to get offered. Yep, I, I totally agree with that. So uh, a couple quick plugs I want to make here because I think you do a really nice job at it. Check out your Instagram, awesome plastic surgeon. You do a great job of, of showing before and afters. You bring in real patient selfie before and afters and real patient belfies. I think that that is uh, excellent and, a, and a great work, very informative. Good use. I, I appreciate that. And, and to that point, you know, one of the biggest things on Instagram, Snapchat, this stuff is there's a lot of fake photos. You know, we joke about fake news, but there's fake news in, in yeah, Instagram and yeah, before and after yeah. picture stuff. And, uh, you know, on your Instagram, yeah. SoCal Plastic Surgeon, they, you do a great job of showing what's a real photo, what's photoshopped and so forth, because I think the biggest thing is having realistic expectations. And yeah, you yeah. guys do a great job of pointing out, look, this is not possible for your waist to be this tiny and your butt this big yeah. when you weigh 90 pounds. <laughs> That's not natural. And, and so... <laughs> to look like Barbie is not possible. She has unrealistic <laughs> measurements, right? I think that's part of mm -hmm. the challenge. And we do. We spend a lot of time, thanks for pointing out, to do real versus fake. I was actually just told by the kids that that means that my Instagram is woke. Does that make us hip? I that don't you're know. woke? I'm not. God knows I'm not hip. But, <laughs> but I am woke, kids. I'm woke. So, uh, let's see. Let's, let's wrap it up here. What else you got for me? Anything else? That's it. That's uh, it. Uh, that's it. I would say, you know, make sure you follow, uh, you know, a board certified plastic surgeon. There's a lot of great info on Instagram, Snapchat, but also separate the the, the real from the not. Um, yeah. You know, there was a recent study that 70% of the, the aesthetic surgeries on Instagram, on Snapchat stuff are for non plastic surgeons. So make sure there's a lot of great information out there, but filter it. Be selective of who you're getting information from. Let, let, let me just, as, as we're wrapping this up, I think, and this is the last great point. What's it matter? 70% of stuff's on Instagram, it's not real plastic surgeons. What's it matter? Yeah, why, I, why do people care? No, I, I think it matters for a couple reasons. One, I mean, you want to make sure that what you're going into is actually what you're getting. I mean, yeah. nobody wants to buy a lemon, especially when the lemon is you. Yep. So you know, step you, one is give, what, give, what, give them what you paid for, give, right? Give them what you paid for because when you come to somebody that does this, they're going to be real with you and say, hey, I can't do that. I can't give you those results. And yeah. then you can decide, hey, yeah, I'm still going to be yeah. happy with yeah. what they, they tell me they can do. Second, you know, everybody's going to have problems if you've had surgery. There's a risk for it, but you want to be with somebody that's going to be able to take care of it. If Dr. Nike or I ever had an issue, we will treat you afterwards. We're yeah. not going anywhere. You will find us. Um, accountability. Step two, accountability, right? So we got step one, get what you pay for. Step two is accountability. May I throw out step three? Sure. Safety, right? I think, no I think that's the biggest portion. You know, we as board certified plastic surgeons, we as plastic surgeons, we are held to a certain set of standards that we guarantee we will have certain safety checks in place. Mm -hmm. Those safety checks do not exist. And one of the ways I tell people, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, is, you know what, if I go buy a BMW, and someone's selling me a BMW for 10 grand, something's wrong with that BMW, right? Either that car is 30 years old and the safety, uh, the airbags mm -hmm. aren't working, or, or there aren't airbags. I think that's an important thing. You can only cut a cost down so much before the safety aspect of it and the customer you know, centric aspect of it is removed. Uh, and that's just dangerous. Uh, no question. I think this is why we talk about patient care all the time because yep. we worry about it. And I think anyone who doesn't worry about it hasn't done enough plastic surgery. I, I totally agree with you. So board certified plastic surgeons, real plastic surgeons on Instagram, get what you paid for, be safe, and? Get what you paid for.